I'm going to start recording. Can you help? Yeah, you're going to be on video. <laughs> so I want you to all do this, okay? Look at a neighbor and say, get out there. Say it back. Get out there. And be you for Jesus. Be you for Jesus. No, come on. Say it to somebody. Get out there. Get out there. And be you. Be you. For Jesus. Okay, hey, don't read me a thing. <coughs> you need to be a little more. Come on. I'm not stopping until I hear from everybody. Get out there. Get out there. And be you. Be you. For Jesus. For Jesus. <laughs> Say I will. I will. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think we get into that place where we just need to confess to each other once in a while and say, come on, hold your responsible. And what is you for Jesus? Well, I got some really good stuff to say. So. But it could be what you are for Jesus. It's a simple thing as you going to the coffee shop or having a meal with somebody, it could be so simple that they're sitting there and you say, I care for you. That could be so simple that you could be you for Jesus. Because you are somebody that brings Jesus in the way you are in your character. So your character is sipping a lot of coffee, then make sure Jesus is in the sipping. But you have to bring that place in there. So if your way to, to be you is a, a, a house mom or what you call homemaker, I don't know, uh, if you have kids, and your your place might be just inviting another family over and being you. And all of a sudden you encourage and you start being you for Jesus. I want to really focus on getting the anointing out there, of getting out there. And um, it's actually, I'm, I really mean it that way. It's, it's, it's almost like a command. This is a prophetic word. This title came prophetically at me. Get out there. Be you for Jesus. It's a prophetic word from God today saying, He's telling us this. And he's saying this to you, and, and listen to it as God's voice. Get out there and be you for me. Be you for Jesus. It is a prophetic word for today. I know that it is. That title didn't just come that easy. It just it, it, it came as a prophetic voice. A cry out to God saying, that's time to stop lingering. It's time to stop tearing and waiting for everything when you can do something in everything. So we need to walk in that place of that. And so I'm going to read some scriptures and I'm going to get into the place of being you. Is that I had a vision of being you. So how many of you have expectations in life and you have a vision of yourself of where you want to be tomorrow or the next day or the future? How many have a vision? Okay. So who's, who's you? Well, you are the person that the desire that you have, the passion you have to be. Is that that's you. So that means that every day you have to step into that you. It means that you have to be you. So meaning that if you have this excitement to see people saved is that you have to stop walking into that vision of being you. Because that's your, God gives us desires, God gives us places of saying, this is what I want you to do. So what is you for Jesus? What is that anointing you need to be in ministry for? It is that vision of one step at a time to walk into you. Meaning that if you sit here, you're not you no more. If you stand still, you're not you no more. You are being a vegetable. Only way you can be you is by moving forward to be you. Meaning that you have to envision so, if you all have a vision of who you want to be, you have to walk in that. You can't say, well, maybe tomorrow. Because you need to cancel that out today, right now. Don't ever say that again. Don't say, well, I'll wait. Don't ever say that no more. Say, I'm going to start walking into who I am today. I am this in Jesus, and I am choosing to walk in there. I am taking this step forward, and I'm going to be me. Because as soon as you stop st still, you're not nobody. You're just being there. I'm sorry, I was going to say that space, but that'd be rude. But uh, well, shoot, I did say that. But anyway, you become that space where, where you need to. I'm not saying that you can't be hurting and there has to be a time of waiting to be healed, but you're still moving forward in your healing. You're still moving into you. And so to be you in Christ Jesus, you have to move forward no matter what. You have to choose to fight the fight. And if you don't fight the fight, you can't be you. Because you're still holy still. You might be still you, but the real you has a vision. The real you has something they want to be tomorrow and the next day and the next year. They have a vision of something they want to be, right? We all have desires. We all want to be greater things in Christ Jesus and even in our business or wherever it be. And we want to be that you. And, and so the thing is, let's make a new you today in that vision that God has given you for you. And so we have to walk in the new you. And it's so important to walk and become you. Because you can't become you if you don't learn, if you don't move forward. You need to become you. And how do we become you? That's what I'm going to talk about today. And I would uh, encourage you to stay for the anointing oil of service of setting people aside to be you. And I'm going to sit, we're going to anoint people to say, you are ready to be you. Because God in the scripture has called us to be in ministry in spite of where we are at. 
he didn't say we're all ministers, we're all pastors, but we're all in ministry. We're all in the ministry of Jesus Christ and bringing Jesus Christ out. So we're all in ministry. We might not be all pastors or ministers. We're not all set aside for that. But we're all set aside to live for Jesus. We're all set aside to bring Jesus to people. And so what I also want to focus on is a place of doing what you do. Meaning that don't do something you don't know how to do. So if you go to somebody and be you and you meet somebody at coffee and they overwhelm you with a situation and if you are going to uh, wink it or, or, or hoodwink it and say, well, I'm just going to try to help them and mess it more up, don't do that. If you don't know how to do it, don't do it. Bring it to somebody that knows how to do it. And that's where the one heart comes together. And we come together and work together in Christ Jesus. So we can all do something. And all of a sudden we come into a situation, I don't know how to deal with it, so I'm going to talk to Pastor Kelly in this situation. I'm going to give an example. I'm going to talk to Pastor Kelly about to see what, what is here. And we work as a team in that sense of finding what we can do to make a success in who we are in Christ Jesus. And so I want to encourage you as you listen to this, is always attempt more, but don't attempt more than you can do. Meaning that when you do more, you'll learn more. And you can always do more. But don't, always, don't ever attempt more than you can do. Learn more and do more, but don't attempt more than you can do. You should write that down. <laughs> learn more, then do more. But don't do more until you know more. <laughs> no, it's a totally different the second time. You should have written down the first time. You missed it. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And I'm going to read a lot of scriptures today, and I haven't done any deep time because this is something God's just going to let it flow today. I'm very excited for this year. I am so joyful. Like, I feel like every battle is behind me. And the only thing I see is victory. Now, that's why I say put your seatbelts on, and let's go. <laughs> and we are going to go. As long as you buckle up with me, then we'll go. Because I might just fly in front of you, and you might not know where I stay if you don't buckle up. And we might we have to go as a vision, as, a, as God has called us as a church, uh, as Christians. We need to just buckle up and go. If you look at the history, and you look at um, the scientific things of this earth, it doesn't show very promising to us. And to me, if it doesn't show very promising, is that I can't take a chance of saying that I have 10 more years. I'm going to take a chance of saying I might only have one more year. That's why it's time to be you. Because we might only have one more year. We might have two more. We might have ten, but always live like tomorrow's the last. If you don't live like tomorrow's the last, you're going to miss out on the first. What God has for you. We need to start living as a, that God has something big for us every day. That we don't miss out on the very opportunity that people need right today. It's not about just me, but it's about being me for Jesus for other people. Then it is all about me, but then I make all about me about Jesus to make about rest of people. Acts 1 8 says this But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come to you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and all out part of the earth, which is Morris, I went back, Lethbridge, Alberta, everywhere. That, that's all the part of Morris. We are part of that. Every part that God prophesied in that place. In the Acts, it was prophesied that this Holy Spirit is going to spread. It's going to start here, and it's just going to go, and it has spread here. And now it's your job to spread it more. And how can you be you? The only way you can be you for Christ Jesus is to allow the power of the Holy Ghost to run through you, because otherwise you can't be you through Christ Jesus, because Jesus runs through the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus' very virtue is the Holy Ghost power. The very things he did is through the power of the Holy Ghost. The only way you can be you is to be in the leading of the Holy Ghost. And then you'll be more encouraged, because it's more easier to do. Then it's in the place of being anxious for nothing and be at peace knowing that I can't understand everything but I have to move forward in this power of the Holy Ghost to be me for Jesus so that we can bring forth a brand new anointing and bring people to Jesus. It is time to gather. It's time to break off the fear and be you. It's time to say I want to be that person so I'm going to start walking as that person. I'm going to start walking into that place that I am designed to be. One step at a time I choose to walk and push forward into who I am called to be. If you stand still, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with me if I stand still. But when I move forward, that's being me. Because a human, a person that is with Jesus, always moves forward, always does something, always goes forward. We don't hold still. We take every opportunity as treasure. I take every coffee I have treasure. I take every person I meet as treasure. We need to take that as an opportunity of our lifetime every time. If we don't, we're not you. You're not being that person that you need to be. So take every opportunity. Take the opportunity to listen today. Opportunity to be you for me today. And I'll be for you. But take that opportunity to be for Jesus today. And it's very important that you do that through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's, it's talked about before the Holy Spirit came. He said, you shall receive the power. And, uh, and Strong's is, um, um, 
the mighty miracle working power. It is the almighty, it's the augmentment. It is, it is the power to be like Jesus. It's the power to have his virtue. It's the power to perform what God has called you to perform. It is the power to be used through Christ Jesus. That's what the word power is. It is the ability to be you through Christ Jesus. It is the ability. It is if he's called you to do miracles, then that gives you that ability to do miracles. If he's called you to save people, that gives you the ability to bring people to Jesus. If that's the power that the Holy Spirit is going to bring to you for the ability that God has created for you. So not everybody might not work in miracles, but everybody works in power. Everybody works in that humongous power, that divine power that God, Jesus works through us. Every one of us does that. Everyone can do that. None of us is left out. It takes divine power to say Jesus loves you to somebody. I guarantee it. Otherwise, Otherwise, more people would do it. Right? It takes divine power to quit sin. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. The only way you can be healed is through the power of the Holy Ghost. The only way we can move forward, the only way we can shed off that old way is through the power of the Holy Ghost. The only way we can be renewed to the new you is through that power of the Holy Ghost. We'll say, well, I, I'm going to quit tomorrow. No, you never will if you say that. you got to say, I quit today. I quit that sin, if that's what it is. I quit that old right now. And I choose to walk into who I am. The vision that God's given me, the desires He's given me, I choose to start walking that way. If we don't, we're not being you. We need to start being you. It's time to walk in you. Get excited with me, guys. This is so cool to be you. Because God has created you, especially for Him. Very special person you are today. Every one of you are so special that He actually created you for Him. He's created you for Him. He's created this vessel to carry something very special, and you've got to honor that vessel that you are today and say, I'm choosing to carry what God has called me to carry. You are special. This goes on with that treasure. We are the treasure of earth and vessels. That, this is the idea of being you. I, the power of the Holy Ghost will allow you to be you. It will remove the fears and sins that always linger on us if we choose to be People say, but George, I still never can get rid of it. Well, a lot of people can't get rid of something because they have a hard time walking into the new. Because they sit in that place, and guess what happens? All habits create. But when you walk in the new you all the time, you always walk forward in the vision that God's called you. Those things leave, that, uh, get behind. But sometimes we walk back to gather more things, and we think we should. We have to research that area again. And every day person is different, so you have to catch the vision for you. I want you to get a hold of this. The power. You receive the power. It doesn't say, I just received it. It says, we received the power. Every single one of you have received the ability to be you in Christ Jesus, and you have no excuses. Do you know everything? No. I didn't expect you to. God doesn't expect you to, but He expects you to take the ability that you have and use it. And that's how you can be you. We know this church, we've got to get rid of the fear. Get rid of the place of saying that, well, what will people think? It doesn't matter what people think because everyone is looking for what you think they don't think. So don't worry about it. They do, really. They're just waiting for you right now. They're waiting for you to touch their hearts right now. And meantime, we're saying, well, you might get hurt. No, they're waiting. You're designed to be you. You're designed to carry this. You're designed to bring this forward. They're waiting for you. There's no such thing as them not waiting for God. They might not understand it all, but then you just can't be anxious so that you can bring the peace to them, even if they don't understand it, but they feel the presence of Jesus in them, that there is no concerns, but there is a place of being you. You, I am calling out as a prophetic word today. This came as a prophetic word. It was a download within a matter of half an hour, and it was definitely in me, but this is God. God didn't let me do much besides say that I'm going to talk to him. That's all he said today. He said, allow it to be a prophetic word today. He didn't allow me to do much besides to put scriptures out. That's all he allowed me to do this time. I would say I'm going to say, you know, check that word out. No. <laughs> you know, he said, you can only check one word out. That's witness. Because that's what you're talking about. Because you're going to go off the rabbit trail if you don't stay away. I've got a word to get these guys out. And they need to get out there. Get out there. Stop being selfish. And if it's not talking to you, then Look at whoever you need to talk to like that about. I'm, but stop being selfish. It's not just about you. Start being you for Jesus. Get out there. I can't make it all about George. It wouldn't work. I can't make a ministry all about George. You can't make your family all about you. you got to make it about the family. You have to understand the family is not your weakness. It's your strength. The church is not your weakness. It's your strength. It is the very strength you need. Family. 
The love, the, the unity of one heart is your strength. It's not your weakness. People say, well, I can't go to church because I've got to hurt there and there. You know what? You are taking your strength out of the way when you stop getting one heart with people. You are removing the strength, the very strength you need. Your family, your church is not your weakness. It should be your strength. Sometimes it is your weakness if it is mixed up, you know, whatever. But the fact is that it's not the way it's designed. God designed family to be your protection. God designed a family to, to nurture you. God designed a family to, to, for growth and multiplication. He has not designed family for anything else but that. But the corrupt world and corrupt enemy that we have has created family in a very different way, hasn't it? Choose to connect to a family that is your strength today. Can be your strength. Amen? Boy, I'm going to. And you shall be witnesses unto you, which I just said, and all the part. But this word witness means that it's, a, it's a, those who, who, after his example, have proven strength and genuineness of their faith in Christ by undergoing not your death, but the death that Jesus had for you. Jesus died for you so that you could carry the witness of what Jesus did for you. And so this word witness means the, the strength and it's a proof that you know that Jesus is alive. That that death that he did was not in vain. That cross work that he did for the world and humanity is not in vain. That's our witness to carry to every person, every soul, is that love of Jesus. And I'm going to go read on in further places here. Let's just read in Acts 2, uh, 31 to 32. As we call this place before in Acts chapter 2, um, 2 to 6 and so forth, the tongue where the Holy Spirit came down with cloven tongues and the power just released. In Acts 1, 8, they were just talking about they were waiting. Oh, something's going to come. And Jesus says, I'm going to anoint you with power. Whoa, everybody was waiting for this power. And you know what? We wait and wait for that power. But the power is here. It's going to fall down today if you allow it to. And just wait to hear the cloud and the, and the air come into here of the Holy Ghost today. And here they were sitting here waiting. And all of a sudden this power came onto them in a brand new way. And the promise, they said, wow, God, you said it was going to happen in the end. But what happened? They sat there and they waited upon the Lord and said, I am not going to give up on your promise and I'm going to wait till I get that promise because I cannot go and be for you, Jesus, until I get this promise because Jesus had just finished telling them that this promise is coming so you can be me. So you can live in my life, so you can be my body. And now this promise came there. And now all of a sudden with this Holy Ghost and Jesus rose, rose from the dead and went to the heaven, all of a sudden all the laws fell off. And it became a spiritual law to us. And now this old ways of getting into that anointing didn't have to be there no more because now the Holy Spirit is here to get into your anointing. Now we have the spiritual law in place. Now everything translated when the Holy Spirit came down. It all came down to freedom. It came down to the place of just saying, Wow, I don't have to live in this place. I don't have to go kill ghosts no more. Hallelujah. I don't have to kill my sheep no more. I was losing a lot of money. No, they probably didn't think that. But overall, they didn't have to do all that no more. And now they go, whoo, that the final sacrifice was done. I don't have to worry about building a tabernacle no more because I became the tabernacle. Wow. Now I just have to put one heart together with the body. And I have to choose to be the tabernacle for people. I have to choose to be that place where people can come and be fixed. I have to choose to be me so that people can be helped through me because that's what the tabernacle was for. The tabernacle was there to release people and set people free. And that's why you as a tabernacle are designed to help people be free and help people to be saved, to help people to walk in this place. You're called to be a tabernacle. So praise God we don't have to you know, put stakes in the ground no more and build this tent. Praise God that I have the gold within me that was in the tabernacle. Praise God, I have the silver with me. Praise God, I have the colors that were there. Praise God, I have the ark within me. Praise God, the kingdom of God is at hand. Praise God, it's within us. You can be you. <coughs> like, it's easier than we think it is. But it just takes a challenge to do what you're called to do. Then verse 31 to 30, it says this, And seeing this before, spoke of the resurrection of Christ, and that his soul was not left in hell. So there's a good example that he probably was in hell. And he says, his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see any corruption. Jesus went there, Almighty God, went to Hades, that word hell means Hades, went to the place, a holding place of death, and he took those keys to the devil and said, these guys are going to be set free. You, I finally did it from the 
past to the present. There is no more, no more chains on you. No more chains have to be. You don't have to be in prison no more. You don't have to be in that place of Hades no more. Hades was not hell, but Hades was a holding place. And God came down there, and He said, "This is done. You are done with." So why even entertain hell when He set you free from hell? Why even entertain that when He's done all that work for us, and that He was an example that there was not one singe on Him, not one burn, not nothing on Him. He was totally free of everything. His soul was not corrupt. He left hell in one peace and holiness and brought peace to us so that we don't have to go to hell. He brought that place to be you, to you. And that what He really did for us is so great. This was right at the Holy Spirit come down there and the power of God. That's, they spoke of Jesus' resurrection. And they spoke of Him setting us free from hell. From that place where the destruction was. Then verse 32 says, And Jesus hath this Jesus hath God raised up. Thereof we all are witnesses. Because of this very reason, for this very reason that He rose again, is the very reason that you are you today. The very reason that you are born again is because He rose again for you. To be a witness for Jesus. To be that person to get out there. And people say, I need to work on myself tomorrow. I'll, I'll wait a little bit. You've got to stop saying that. If you are an introvert, or if you are a person that can't get out there, then do something where you are at. Do something when you meet people. Do whatever you can for Jesus. Get it out there. Because if you can't get out there, the person you talk to might be able to get out there. So if you can share one person that is excited for Jesus, it can bless you greatly because you're going to have great fruit from that one person that you just shared Jesus with. It only takes one person for you to share Jesus with. And that could put many crowns on your head because of the fruit that you bear by sharing one person to Jesus. About. Just one person in your life sometimes. I would encourage you to do way more than one person. You look at it as a business. You know how you grow this church? If each one of us would bring two people here, how fast would this grow? And they would start bringing two people. And they would start growing. Look, God's kingdom is the greatest business in the world and it's for free. There's a little bit of obedience involved, a little bit of commitment involved, but it only takes, even if you took one person and they got excited and brought three, what would happen? We would over explode in a very short time, but it takes you to get off of anxiety, us off of anxiety and say, I am choosing to live and be me for Jesus. And this is the anointing that we want to receive today. Because this is the place of safety, this is a place of comfort that people need. They need a family because that's their strength. We need to bring people to the family where they be strengthened. We need to bring people into that place. So let's walk into that place today. To be you for Jesus. And that word witness is the same as the first word there. Acts chapter 4, 32 to 34. And the multitude of them believed were in one heart and one soul. Neither said of them that, um, them that ought of the things which uh, he possessed was his own, but he had all things in common. So now everything they had, they give everything to Jesus and said, you know what, it's not my own no more. I give my life to Jesus, everything I have is for Jesus now. Everything. I give it all up. You might have the things you lived in, but Jesus lends those things to you and he allows you to live in the blessing. But everything you have, everything you are, is meant to be for Jesus. Everything. Then it goes on and it says in verse 31, I mean 33, and with great power, the same power as before, I was talking about the power of great, greatness of divine power, gave the apostles witnesses, which means testimony. So what gave the testimony, what gave them the witness? The great power. I mean that the ability that God gave them, given them witnesses to be. So how can you be witnesses? With great power. I mean the ability to be you. So now you start being you in Christ Jesus. Now you become a great witness within the power that God has given you. What power are you carrying? You have to find out who you are. And you probably know who you are. You know enough to do something. We all do. We all know enough to do something. Then it says the power testimony of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. So here they give up everything. He said, this possession is not my own no more. We all are in common. We are one body here. Everything I have is for you. Everything I do is for the body of Christ. Everything I have is just not mine no more. Maybe I have a house to live in, but it's not mine either. 
We still have meetings in there. We have gatherings in there. It's not about me. How, thank God I have a house that I can share with people. Thank God we have that, but it's not for me. It is for the family. It is for God. We are that oneness. And we are that place that I, and I have to be me to bless people. But it says that they, they witnessed of the great testimony of Jesus Christ, the resurrection. They brought the power. And the power of resurrection power came out of them. The very ability to do things for Jesus. Are you, are you guys still awake? Are you, am, I, am I good? Your preach is awesome. That's good. Let's go for it all the way. Because you know what? I have this burning in me. I feel like joking around. I like feel like laughing. I feel like crying. Because I have this joy that's overbubbling. I don't know what to do with. And I know when I say that 2011... I am putting my seatbelt on it and I'm not stopping. So you better put it on with me if you want to come with me because we're not stopping. And on Sunday, for those people uh, that we're going to talk more into those things of, of blessing. So we have to understand that this is just a beginning of great things. And we have to start envisioning this place full. We have to start envisioning people healed. We have to start envisioning people saved because if we don't put our minds to it, if we don't put our hearts to it, it's not going to happen. We've got to start being you. You gotta start doing something. We all gotta start doing more than we have. Yeah, we say, but we're busy working. Well, then do something while you're working. Do something when you meet people. It doesn't matter. You can do something. Do something when you have coffee with somebody. Do something when somebody calls you. Love on people. Bless them. You can be you wherever you are. God's purpose is the very step in the very place you are. That's His purpose for you. His vision might be different, but His purpose is for you to be you where you are at and do something where you are at. You say, well, I can't do much. Yes, you can. You can all say hi. You can all say bless you. You can all buy somebody coffee. It's not that, I mean, we're pretty good off that we can spare a dollar sometimes. Or a dollar fifty, whatever it is. Or we can bring some bacon to somebody. We can, we can give somebody a hug. We can do something. That is an ability that we have. I often think about my mom. She has ability to bake cookies that I like. And that is an ability. Because I get blessed when I eat a cookie. I feel loved. Because she makes it for me. So the fact is, she's doing something for me. The fact is that it's an ability. That it's a power that we all need to understand. That we complicate things way too much and we stop being us. Don't complicate yourself. Just be you. And when you be you, you learn more about you and you become more of you. And then you can do more of you. Wow. Praise God. I think you all should take the DNA course again. By the way, I'm putting another course, I'm putting another session into a very good one, so.